So yes, I'm doing this right now because frankly speaking, I'm getting a bit rusty with my video editing skill, hello viewers, and welcome to a brand new episode of Mechanics Brewery, where I review the various homebrew mechs created by the Lancer fandom, Field Guide to McCain Special. To viewers who have watched past episodes of the series before, I will be doing it a bit differently this time, my old writing style might have been a bit too rigid for current me now. In today's episode, Ebutho, from Vikain, by NHP Shaka, but before getting into that, let's talk about the Vikain's core bonus first, of which there's four in total, that focuses on increasing your mech's ability in outpositioning your foes via tactical battlefield maneuver. Chest formation integrated shield makes you tougher for a moment, with a quick action and two heat, you can gain a decent amount of overshield to protect the actual frame from harm. Left horn formation enhanced combat systems lets you flank the enemy better, simply draw a line between you and your ally, and if any enemies on it do anything, both of you can immediately smash them right through their defense. Right horn formation tactical cloak does the opposite, enemies on the line have a harder time hitting you instead. Finally, loins formation transferable heat spikes lets you suck some heat out of a nearby character with a quick action, and then either transfer half of that heat to a nearby unfortunate fellow or, well, you, not as good as stabilize, but it can work in a pinch. With the core bonuses done, let's actually move on to the Ebutho. Ebutho, in Zulu, stands for Regiment, this is probably the most straightforward name for a Lancer frame in all of homebrew history. The actual army or warriors of the Zulu tribe were instead called Impi, who were trained as early as 6 years old and after their 20th birthday, were grouped into Amabutho or Regiments, plural. They were typically equipped with Izalangu, shield made of cowhide, and were armed with either an Ikwe, a stabbing spear, or an Iwisa, a hardwood club. In battle, the Zulu usually fought in what was called the Buffalo Horns Formation, essentially a flanking maneuver, with the horns flanking left and right, the chest or head being the central force where the main strength are gathered, and the loins as reserve force to exploit opening or reinforce the formation. Encirclement tactics aren't exactly unique, what was special however was the degree of organization the Zulu had, as well as the consistency in which they used these tactics and the speed they executed them with. With this name, the Ibutho is certainly equivalent to a thousand flesh and blood men and women in its combat prowess alone, now all it needs is a pilot to wield this power. Looking at its stats, Ebutho is a normal size boy with one armor, excellent health, and good repair cap, along with decent evasion and mobility. Its sensor range is a unique 7 which is okay, and while its e-defense isn't something to be proud with, it does have 7 base systems points and a good enough heat cap. As for its traits, it has 3 of them, First there's position the bull thrusters, which lets Ebutho fly 3 goddamn spaces before ramming someone. Second, bull's horn combat systems, at half health, Ebutho does more damage with melee attack, at 1 health, Ebutho does even more damage to quite a ludicrous degree. And third, unshackle, for once per scene as a free action, the Ebutho may temporarily reduce its structure and stress to 1 for the remainder of the scene, you are probably asking why would you do this but trust me, this makes sense later. You also get back one structure and one stress at the end of the scene if they weren't one before you use this trait, so it's, something I guess, but basically, you can already tell two things about Ebutho, it loves ramming, and it will absolutely kill everything even on the pain of death. As for its weapon mounts, it has two, one main slash auxiliary and one main. Onto its core power, Ebutho can activate Shaka class NHP that are integrated right into the system as a protocol, and for once per round lets you choose one of the formation until the start of your next turn. Chest formation just lets you smash someone again if you have smashed them already, horn formation lets you boost extra hard with half your speed and also guess what, more ramming with free ram, loins formation instead keeps you safe by giving you soft cover until you attack and even resistance to one attack per round. All of that already gives Ebutho quite a lot of tactical flexibility and ramming, but you also gain a core passive called break chains until you fully rest. Basically, at one structure and one stress, Shaka gains full control of your mech and goes fucking nuts like Sikamet, with each destroyed enemy, you deal more bonus damage and move faster, up to 6 for both, so Ebutho is gonna move like a fucking speed demon if you feed it a bunch of victims I mean grunts, like Sikamet, this lasts until you die, the scene ends, or you shut down the mech. Now, I think you know why its third trait exists now, you ever want to wipe the map clean of enemy, just smash it after activating the core power. However, there's one bad thing about the Ebutho, because of Shaka, no other AI system can be installed, even with lesson of shaping, 
it's like Shaka just deny access to other NHP entirely. Now onto the rest of the license, you get reinforced subdermal plating and ingoma for the first section. Reinforced subdermal plating really lets you take the hit, when you brace, instead of having the damage, you can just reduce the damage to a puny one if it's smaller than 4 plus your grit, which can really make you somewhat invincible with low damage NPC around. You also can take 2 heat to ignore one status or condition from the triggering attack, so if the enemy tried to immobilize you, that's not happening, a very good defensive systems, but you need to actually use brace to utilize it. Ingoma is a set of invade options that are perfect for duelist at any range, dance makes the target immediately shredded, no save, it just happens, but it only works one time, sing instead gives you and the target one accuracy to attack each other, but you are not playing fair because if you crit, you deal even more damage. If you don't have terrible tech attack bonus, I really recommend the systems to any striker or artillery build out there. Aside from a butho frame itself, you get Isalangu and Ikalwe, Isalangu, the shield, this weapon deals a very weird but decent damage with one knockback too, it also costs one systems point because it has the rest of the stuff, when you brace, this weapon become charged, also when you brace, you can move two spaces to attack with this weapon, even when you are slowed. On hit, when this weapon is charged, you may expend a charge to trip everyone in burst 2 immediately. I guess Ebutho loves ramming, bracing, and knocking people down now, I also recommend this weapon if you are a brace connoisseur. Ikalwe, the spear, this weapon deals a weird damage too, but it has decent reach, armor piercing, and has one burn that's a reliable damage so the target will always get singed, it does cost one, systems point two but that seems absolutely worth it for its capability. In the final section, you get the crushing and project the iconda. The crushing, is a very literal named systems, upon activation by expending a limited charge, you immediately get crushed for not so insignificant amount of damage but you get to mark 3 free spaces within range 3 with crushing mark. Any enemies that step in these spaces, even if you are halfway across the map, you immediately teleport back and crush them flat with a chosen melee weapon, this reaction can also be taken multiple times in a round so if 3 enemies walk onto the mark in the exact same round, you can crush all of them flat, the crushing mark also lasts basically forever, so if you have a lot of controllers on your team, it's crushing time. And finally, project the Iconda, do you want your enemies to not stand up forever, this is it, with a quick action and some heat, you can project a burst 3 sized hologram house that might as well have a giant neon sign written kneel on it. When active, you cannot boost or hide but you cannot get knocked prone, on the other hand if hostiles get knocked prone within the Iconda, they take more damage if they get smashed by attack originated within the Iconda, and before they could even attempt to stand up, they have to pass a system save each turn or they can't get up at all. Of course, the system doesn't actually knock people prone, you need to do that yourself, and guess what is really good at that and guess what Ebutho is really good at? In conclusions, Ebutho is a striker that wants three things, speed, ram, and extreme violence, I recommend giving it some Nelson systems in case you want even more mobility, its license is just packed with systems that make it really good at dueling, or really good at introducing faces to dirt, if you like the sound of that, or just the sound of mechs dying in glorious melee combat, Ebutho might just be what you are looking for. Anyway that's all for now, and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.